need to return your call. That's 483. Thank you. Hi. ID card? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Almost 35,000 today. We got nobody else today. Sure you do. He signed here. Yeah, Carl S. Williams. We got nobody by that name. mind whether he wants to be a school principal or a military man. Oh, we should be proud, Rose. How many school principals ride to their Army Reserve meetings with the son of President Eisenhower? I'm not too impressed. Besides, Dr. Smith has got a school to run here. Ever since he became principal, the school is going straight to... Dr. Smith, uh, Mr. Bradfield has a problem he'd like to discuss with you. Mr. Bradfield frequently does. Step into my office. Thank you, Dr. Smith. I'd like Are you to talk speaking to you. as a member of the English faculty or as a teacher's representative? As a teacher's representative, actually. Mrs. Reinert thinks that your last evaluation of her did seem a bit uh, unfair. I find that a bit periphrastic, don't you? Well, yes, perhaps. When next you see Mrs. Reinert, you might suggest that she accept an unsatisfactory notice in a more Ransomigrafoldian fashion. I confess to not uh, knowing uh, uh, Rens. Uh, I am not employed to teach a vocabulary to the English faculty. Now I have a meeting. You really must excuse me. Thank you. Do you have a dictionary? Did he throw one of those $50 words at you? Did you know? <laughs> he invents those words half the time. He loves to torment you people. Rose, I gotta see my father. Stephanie, how's your mother, dear? Did you... I suppose everybody knows by now that she got arrested. No. What for? Prostitution. Isn't that terrible? And her poor mother in the hospital. It's cancer. Susan. Susan, he was in no mood to listen today. I try to talk to him when he's in a better mood. Are you coming over tonight? I mean, you promise. Hello. Hi. Oh, I was just asking Bill if he was able to persuade Dr. Smith to change my notice. I mean, it was really terribly unfair. Well, I think he might reconsider, Susan. I'll try to get him when he's in a better mood. Bill, um, Vince is going to join us for dinner. Uh, should I make meatloaf? Great. Oh, excuse me. I think I just see my children. Bye, Susan. Hi, Mom. Hi. Hi, Mom. That's me. Hi. You look good. Is that a good day? Yeah. You gonna be here, Mom? Seth. 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 You two just do your homework until I'm through, OK? I really appreciate this. I hope they're not going to be a bother. No, I'm glad for the company. OK, be good. This is your principal speaking. There will be a new regulation for gym clothing. You may wear yellow bottoms and blue tops, or blue bottoms and yellow tops. 
I trust this will please faculty authoritarians and not displease libertarians. However, I have one caveat. In the winter, it shall be the civic duty of each and every student to be encased in warm underwear. Thank you for buying Michael that baseball shirt. It was really very sweet of you. Oh, he's a great kid. It's my pleasure. Was Sue Myers just saying that for my benefit, or is Bill really having dinner at home tonight? Susan, please. I'm not just her neighbor, they're my friends. Don't get me involved. He was supposed to have dinner with me and the children. Maybe you just misunderstood him. Bill gets involved with people more than he ought to. Really, you shouldn't expect he's ever going to be more than just a friend. They've been living together a long time. They're happy. She hates me, you know. Sue doesn't hate you. Why should she? There's a whole lot about your dear friend Bill Bradfield that you don't know. I hope I didn't discourage you regarding Mrs. Reinert's evaluation. I don't mind a spirited disagreement from the faculty. No, no, no. As a teacher's rep, I, uh, I'll try to be a, uh, a worthy adversary, I'm sure. Yes. And in the future, I'll try to be less circumlocutory. Would you come in here, please? Oh, I forgot my piano. Okay. Close the door. How long are those kids going to be here? Well, they're just waiting for their mother to drive them home. We're not here to babysit for single parents. Well, it's only for 20 minutes. She doesn't do it often, and they're no trouble. I don't care. Get rid of them. for two years and I still feel strange around him. He gives me the willies. Could our school principal actually be the Prince of Darkness? Have you had a chance yet to introduce your advanced students to Ezra Pound? Not yet. If I can't understand his work, how can I expect my students to? Oh, nonsense, Vince. You are too intelligent to give up. Do you think I understood Pound the first time I encountered him? But he moved me. He changed my life. He may well be judged by historians who have been the greatest American poet of this generation. You know, Sue told me that when you were an undergraduate, you actually met him. <sighs> he was living in a mental hospital in Washington. When I read him, I knew I had to see him. I had to tell him that he was a great man, a genius. That the world wasn't worthy of him. Was this before he was charged with treason? What is treason to an artist? They called him a fascist. They said he collaborated with Mussolini. What does that mean to a genius? It sounds horrible. Being locked up in an asylum. Oh, in many ways, I envied him. But the loneliness must have been a blessing. Look. I have lived in this place here with Sue for five years. Do you think I'm not lonely? But to be truly alone like Ezra Pound, locked away in a small cell-like room, that seems to me in many ways a blessing. Dinner's ready, gentlemen. This may be the best meatloaf I've ever made. Wonderful. 
It smells great. It looks wonderful. Thank you. Hello. That was a hang-up. There were children screaming in the background. I know who it was. Sue. Sue! Don't say anything! I'm sick of it! Sit down, Vince. She'll be all right. It probably was Susan Reinert. Someone won't leave me alone. I've tried to help her with advice. But I think she's infatuated with me. She's desperate for a stepfather for her children. I feel sorry for the woman. You can't take on the problems of the whole faculty. I know, but if I'm ever going to make a mark with my poetry, I've got to become emotionally involved with other human beings. But that is all it is. Why Sue should be jealous of that mousy little woman, I do not understand. She is not even an adequate teacher. She probably deserved that low evaluation she got from Dr. Smith. So why don't you just tell her you can offer advice as teacher's rep, but nothing more? I know I should do that. I know I should. But she's so pitiful. She's so needy. It's fascinating. People like her provide the grist for my poetry. I'm starved. Let's just eat it here, okay? About right here. <sighs> Don't move. should just have to get over it. I'll just have to tell Susan Reinhardt bluntly that I can't be her personal advisor anymore. She thinks Sue hates her. She told you that? Oh, she's more neurotic than I thought. You ought to stay away from her. I probably shouldn't tell you what she said to me today. Vince, I think that we're as close as brothers and that you can tell me anything. Well, when I tried to tell her that you weren't interested in her romantically, she implied I didn't know what I was talking about. Her sexual obsessions disgust me. You know that she told me that she goes to singles bars? And she picks up men for kinky sex? I think she fantasizes that I'll rescue her through marriage. She probably includes me in her sexual fantasies. You haven't actually... You know me better than that. I mean, I may not share your religious convictions, but I share your feelings about chastity. <laughs> Religion always pops up in our conversations. Do you think someday you'll want to convert to Catholicism? Well, in my heart, I'd probably like to be a priest, a monk, preferably. Listen, I want to tell you something. Even my relationship with Sue is completely platonic. I have no need whatsoever for a sexual relationship with anyone, and least of all, Susan Reinert. I know you can understand that. I do. I understand perfectly. Sleep well, Vince. Sue, you're being silly. And you know it. Not this one, Bill. Not Susan Reinert. I've stayed with you through all the others. During all your affairs, I pretended and I forgave. I won't forgive you, Susan Reinert. She has nothing to offer. 
But to think of you with her is, is the most insulting thing imaginable. She's an insult. Believe me, I despise this woman. I've somehow gotten myself into the position of advising her. I wish I hadn't. I know you better than anyone ever will. I know you better than I ever want to know another human being. I agreed to live with you without getting married. I've learned to live with you without physical love from you. I've always dreamed of a family. Soon I'll be too old. Soon. We've been together such a long time. It's so comfortable like this. If I ever thought you slept with Susan Reinhardt, I'd lock you out of my life forever. Locked out? I would rather be locked away like Ezra Pound than locked out of your life. That woman's problems are grist for my poetry, nothing more. It's true that no one will ever know me like you do or love me as you do. I can't live without love. Your love. You know how much I need you to believe in me. You can make a woman feel like she's the most important thing in the universe. Could be the guy from the shopping mall. Yeah, let's take him. I wasn't speeding, was I? Can I see your driver's license, please? It's in the car. Drop it! Oh, my goodness. Don't move a muscle. this and don't tell me you're a diabetic it belongs to my son-in-law look at this stuff do you believe this tape gloves plastic bags four guns what the hell's going on here my son-in-law he used this car I'll be damned. You know what this is? It's a homemade silencer.
got to be the guy who robbed Sears. Principal of Upper Marion High School. I can't believe it. He's got more silencers than the CIA. <laughs> Look where he tested it. Look at this. We've got gallons of nitric acid marks Upper Marion Chemistry Lab. Why the hell would he steal nitric acid? There's a lot of different kinds of dope in this file cabinet. Look. Where's what do you make of this? Upstairs, I think. 79th U.S. Aircom. That's his reserve outfit. They say he's a full colonel in the Army Reserve. And a part-time thief. He even stole the Army's combs. I don't know what he taught at his school, but he sure got exotic taste in literature. <laughs> Look at the titles of these books. Her Bestial Dreams. <laughs> Look at this one. Her Canine Lover. I shot all the contraband Fine. bullet holes in the walls in an overall shot of the basement. You want me to shoot this stuff? Chains and locks. What's that all for? Bondage? Maybe it's for the canine lovers he likes to read up on. What the hell? Take a shot at him. A syringe Dr. Smith had in his pocket was loaded with that chlorvanol, a tranquilizer. So parking pills aren't enough. He mainlines his dope. A uh, syringe wasn't for him. The lab says a bloodstream injection would produce unconsciousness within a minute. Maybe he was trying to kidnap the owner of that shopping mall. All he would say is the dope belonged to his son-in-law. Edward Hunsberger. He says he was carrying the guns to scare off some kids who were harassing him. Hey, where did you hear this title? <laughs> did you see the interview with Dr. Smith's wife in the hospital? Educator's secret life is a mystery to his wife, too. And another one says, Dr. Smith and Mr. Hyde. What do you make of this story about Dr. Smith's daughter and her husband being sought by the police? Well, he blames the drugs on them, and he says the security guard's uniform belongs to friends of theirs. I wonder if it's possible. I mean... They're both known drug addicts, and Dr. Smith's never been involved in any trouble. I bet Dr. Smith's guilty of that robbery and lots more. That man's sinister. I've been saying it since I came here. Very sorry. Do drugs, that doesn't necessarily mean. Excuse me. Uh, as your teacher's representative, I feel I should tell you that I've drafted a letter to Dr. Smith. A letter of support. Support? For a robber? Well, I realize he's been accused of some dreadful things, but I find it almost impossible to conceive of him as some sort of a... Dr. Smith or Mr. Hyde? As a sort of a man who would actually have a double life. Anyway, he's innocent until the authorities prove him otherwise. And I think that uh, out of loyalty and decency, he deserves our support. At least for now. <laughs> Letter of support for the Prince of Darkness. Yeah, he always made my skin crawl. Those eyes. A look from him is like an obscene phone call. Oh, He didn't show up. I just I kind of lost control. I felt such rage. And have you considered the possibility that he may not be the one that you feel angry at? Oh, hello, Susan. I'm sorry I'm late. I just ran into a terrible problem at school. Anything you'd like to tell us about? Well, maybe I should. Well, go ahead. Well, you know about my friend, Bill. Since our last session, things between us have really heated up. Oh, I wish things would heat up in my life. <laughs> well, well, today at school, I got into a physical fight with Sue Myers. It was the first time in my life. It was horrible. She attacked me. She threatened me. It was so humiliating. Susan, you've already talked about this bill for nearly a year. He said he'd leave her, and he hasn't. How long are you going to put up with this? Yeah, honey. Look, I ain't an educated person like you, but I know when somebody's given me the runaround. Why don't you dump this creep? The guy is no good. He's a manipulative bastard. 
What do you think when they say those things, Susan? Well, I don't know what to think. I mean, you don't know, Bill. You're a smart girl. You're better than this. Getting yourself beat up for a guy isn't worth it. He's been with her so long, he feels a responsibility towards her. She's needy and unstable. He's told me that he's just waiting for the moment so he can get out of her life. If you're staying in this affair, you better take karate, hon. <laughs> <laughs> if you meet him, you'd understand. You'd see what he's really like. So this theme of revenge and retribution is pretty dramatically highlighted when Odysseus comes home. And those of you that are doing your term paper on Ezra Pound's cantos might want to think about this theme of retribution. Pound used Homer as a so... <laughs> Share the joke, Carl. Oh, I should have known it would be inevitable that I'd have to talk about Dr. Smith today. Look, you're advanced placement students. You're the cream of Upper Marion. I'm disappointed in people who would prejudge Dr. Smith without being privy to all the facts. We've all read enough about the life of Ezra Pound to know that even a man accused of the most serious crimes, treason against his country, can still be judged by history to be a supreme artist. Now we have some analogies here. We have another highly intelligent man, an unconventional man who stands accused. We can all have a little patience and a little charity until we know all the details. Now, are there any questions about today's work? Yes. Uh, Mr. Bradfield, I don't understand some of this poem by pound that I'm supposed to analyze. What part? Um, I, I mate with my free kind upon the crags. The hidden recesses have heard the echo of my heels in the cool light, in the darkness. Well, that just means that uh, an unconventional man can find another man, a friend, on the crags of life beyond convention, a mate. He mates with another man? <laughs> Not in a physical sense. It means that a certain kind of man can find his own kind, his free kind. Not in the valleys crowded with mobs, but on the crags. Not in the light favored by ordinary men, but in the hidden recesses. In the darkness. Exactly, in the darkness. Good afternoon, Miss Bradfield. Hello, Shelley. How are you? Just fine, and yourself? Oh, very well. I'm missing last year's brightest senior already. You going to college soon? I'm leaving Monday. It's scary going all the way to California. Oh, you'll be terrific. Just don't forget to study your Greek verbs. I'll never forget anything you taught me, Mr. Bradfield. You promised to see me one more time before I go. I've tried. I want to. But when? We'll go sailing this weekend at Annapolis. I'll get Krista in a boat. I want to tell the world about us. There'll be a lifetime for that, Shelley. Be patient. Shelley's going to bring us some food, Chris. She's a good girl. Yeah, she is a good girl. I want the best for her, which is why I want to tell you something about our relationship. You don't have to worry about me, Bill. You're my friend. I don't judge friends. Hey, I want your judgment. I respect you. If hadn't been for your encouragement when I was a student, I would be a teacher today. It means a lot to hear you say you respect me. I want you to know that I have no intention of seducing that child. It's just that I have these needs. It has to do with being loved. I need the love of more than one person at a time. Affectionate, unsullied love. But I want you to know, when Shelley is done with her education, I intend to marry that girl, and I'm going to be a great husband. Hey! How's my not-so-ancient mariner? Hey! That girl will redeem me. That girl is my ticket to heaven. Silly bringing him these books as a gift. Let him buy his own books now that he's out on bail. Oh, the poor man can hardly afford to buy food to eat. Do you realize what his lawyers must be costing him on top of his wife's illness? And now the police are hounding him. 
I just want him to know that not every member of the faculty has turned against him. Where's your compassion? The man's lost his job, he's scorned, abandoned. He's facing a, a trial and a possible prison term. What'll he have when he gets out? He'll be penniless. I'm sorry, I just somehow can't see Jay Smith's leaving as a replay of Goodbye, Mr. Chips. dream. Oh, it did. The date that Dr. Smith was supposed to have robbed that store? Mm -hmm. He couldn't have. He was in Ocean City that day. Bill, what are you talking about? Well, that date, I'll never forget that date. It's embedded in my mind. That's the date that our real estate investment wiped us out. Will you ever forget that date? Well, no, but I don't Well, know I was you... depressed. I went to the shore by myself for a few days. It was a Saturday, you remember. And I happened to run into Dr. Smith at the shore. You didn't tell me you saw him. I didn't seem important at the time. I didn't pay any attention to the date of the robbery until I heard it on the news today. That date. What are you going to do? Well, what can I do? I've got to offer my testimony at his trial. The man's innocent. I've got to be his alibi witness. It's the only honorable thing to do. I don't care about your excuses or promises. You can make a choice between her and me. All right. All right. We can discuss it when you get here. I can't talk anymore. My ex is here. Bye-bye. Hi, Dad! Hi, kiddo. Are you going to play ball? Of course we are, Michael. Hi, Daddy. Hiya, honey. Mm. I wrote a new poem for you. Did you? Can't wait to read it, sweetie. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry about your mother. Oh, it was a shock, but at least it was quick. She didn't suffer. Now I'm going to deal with the lawyers about the estate. Do you need any advice? I may. Um, my share is 34000 and I was thinking about making an investment uh, for the kids' education. If you want to talk to anyone at my bank, just let me know. Or anything, anything at all. Thanks, Ken. I'll have the kids back uh, Sunday after dinner, OK? Thanks for the ride home, Chris. Sure, anytime. You know that I've been meeting with Dr. Smith's attorneys about being his alibi witness? Yeah. Well, I've got to take you into my confidence in a way that I've never done with another human being. I don't want to go home just yet. Could we drive in the country? So you're telling me that you suspect him of other crimes, yet you're still going to be his alibi witness? I have no choice. Can I trust you? Of course. I think I'm in danger. Oh. From Dr. Smith. He's been meeting with me privately. I've been to his home. I've met with him in Valley Forge Park and other places. I'm getting drawn into it in spite of myself. Drawn into what? The man's a criminal. I don't mean the robbery. I imagine that a friend of his son-in-law is the same age and height as Dr. Smith did that. But make no mistake about it. Dr. Smith is involved in major crimes of his own. Well, like what? 
Like murder. I'm starting to believe he may well have committed murder. Murder? He may have killed someone during a drug transaction. Oh, I can't believe that. I know, Chris. It sounds fantastic, but it's true. It can't be. I'm telling you it's true. Well, if that's what you think, then you've got to go to the police, Bill, now. Not now. Not yet. I don't have any proof, not a shred. Being a military man all his life, Dr. Smith has connections in several local police departments. If he even dreamed that I'd gone to the police, he could kill me. He could have me killed. Bill, I don't think you should ever go near that man again. I've got to. What do you mean, got to? Because I've learned something terrible. I think he's preparing to harm someone that we both know. I think he's gonna try to harm Susan Reinert. Susan Reinert? But why? Because it turns out that they've been secret lovers for a long time. I know, I couldn't believe it either, but he convinced me. Apparently she's been seeing other men, kinky types that she meets in singles bars. Dr. Smith has found out about it and he's insanely possessive. He says he's gonna kill her. Have you warned her? I don't dare. Just like I don't dare go to the police. You've read the papers. You've read what they say they found in the basement. Guns, silencers, and he has used them. But I don't have any proof of anything he's told me. I've got to try to keep his confidence intact while I learn something specific. Then when I gather enough evidence, I can go to the police and they have to put the man away. Chris, do you remember that you once told me that you always wondered how you would have performed if the Vietnam War had continued. Well, that's the kind of war I'm involved in. A covert war. And Dr. Smith is a dangerous adversary. I need your help. I don't think there's anything I can do, Bill. Hey, look, the reason that you've always lacked confidence in the past is precisely because you've never had confidence shown in you by your father. Neither did I. But it is time to put that behind us. I've decided that somehow I'm going to prevent that madman from harming Susan Reinert, and I'm going to gather enough evidence to have him put away forever. I need to do this to prove myself, to myself, even if I have to do it alone. But I cannot watch her house and keep tabs on him. Is that what you want me to do, watch him? On certain nights, you could park your car near his street. But if he tries to leave, don't try to follow him. He's too cagey for that. You drive straight to Susan Reinert's house and get there before he does. You wait a safe distance away, you see if his car shows up. But, Bill, the only thing is, what if he does go to her house? What could I do? Should I phone the police? Do I try to warn her? Do I... We're not involved in a kid's game, Chris. We may have to shoot Dr. Smith. Only in self-defense or defense of Susan Reinert. Now, you are the only one that can help me save her. If I ask Vince, he'll fall apart. He's not half the man you are. Okay, I'll do it. Yes, ma'am. I have some information for the detectives who are handling the Jay Smith investigation. Well, what kind of information? We're the parents of Edward Huntsberger. Our son is married to Dr. Smith's daughter, Stephanie. What do you mean they're gone? Officer, Eddie and Stephanie are drug addicts. Well, they left one day and said they'd be right back. I thought they were going to Dr. Smith's. They've never come back. When I called him, he said they'd left for California abruptly. It doesn't make sense. Eddie's our only child. He wouldn't leave like that. Well, drug addicts do move around pretty fast, you know. If you do this stitch, it takes twice as much wool and it gets really tight. Well, but precisely, I think you're using wool too tight, don't you see? Why? Hi, Bill. How's my Lorelei? Well, that's hmm? Hello. Pat. Hello, Bill. I just came to tell Susan that I wasn't able to find out about it. Bill that. was uh, going to see if I could perhaps get a class of advanced placement students next year. You'd be a good choice. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to be going. No, me too. I just thought I should tell Susan as quickly as I could. We'll see you at school. I've seen the Philadelphia Flyers move as fast as that, but they're on ice skates. He didn't expect that I had company. Obviously. 
I was just about to come up and tell you I've decided to go with you and Sue to Florida for the Christmas holidays. Well, that's fine, Vince. Hey, uh, you want to go get some ice cream? I may want to see your priest. Well, great. You're meant to be a Catholic. I just knew it. No, I wasn't exactly talking about converting just yet. I may want the confidential advice of a confessor. I have a moral dilemma. Can I help? Maybe. You are my best friend. I can't tell Sue, not yet. I'd like to help. What is it? You don't need a priest. You need Michael the Archangel. This is a nightmare. I don't know if I want any ice cream. My teeth are chattering enough already. Turn left up here. The store's that way. Please, Vince. I have to show you something. It'll just take a minute. I haven't told you everything. I think I know what happened to his daughter and his son-in-law. You mean about why they disappeared? The trash. You've heard the stories about how Dr. Smith brings his trash from home and dumps it in the school dumpster? It's just another one of his eccentricities. <laughs> yeah. We're part of his canniness, Vince. Think about it. Bundles of trash. You don't Those think... Those bundles might very well contain the remains of his daughter and son-in-law. Dear God. We've got to go to the police. No, we can't. If we don't have any proof, they'd never believe us. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I think that I can control him. I think that I can convince him not to harm anyone else. And then when we get enough evidence, we can go to the authorities. All right, pull off over here and turn out the lights. Valley Forge Road, isn't it? It's Dr. Smith's house. Be quiet. Hold your hand over the light when I get out. Get out! You're not getting out. I have to get out. If Dr. Smith is in the basement at this hour, it means he's not going out tonight and Reinhardt is safe. I can sleep without worrying. I need some sleep. about what you said about getting Michael baptized. I've already been baptized, haven't I? Well, christened in your grandparents' church, Michael. What are we now? Well, I'm a Unitarian, but I don't see any reason why you couldn't be christened an Episcopalian like a grandma and grandpa. Okay, where do we do it? Well, I thought the Washington Memorial Chapel in Valley Forge Park might be a nice place. Hey, this is the kind of van we're gonna get when we go to Europe with Bill. Who's Bill? My mom's friend, Bill Bradfield. Oh, I keep having these dreams about going to Europe with friends. Would you like a cookie? <laughs> I hope Episcopalians won't dunk me underwater. <laughs> it's fun to be with him when he's like this. I think that's what first attracted me to him. 
And he's bright and he's erudite, but I like the kid in him. Here. He needed this holiday desperately. So do I. If I hear one more story about how Jay Smith's going to kill Susan Reinhardt, I'm gonna commit murder. He's told you then? Told me. Do you know he's out six nights a week working on this Jay Smith craziness? Do you know what I think it is? A midlife crisis. <sighs> I just wish she hadn't seen Jay Smith in Ocean City the day of the robbery. If he did see him. You don't really think Bill would lie to give Jay Smith an alibi? No, not lie, but... What if he's mistaken about what Saturday it was? He has a terrible memory for dates. What are these? Gloves. You bought them when we went shopping. He never wears gloves. Being with Dr. Smith. The blood runs cold and one must dress warmly. Stop it. That's not funny. You know, I've spent a fortune on horror movies in my life just hoping for a scare. These days I'm getting all the fright I can handle. For free. <laughs> it's my money. I want cash. But Mrs. Reinhardt, twenty-five thousand dollars is a lot of cash. We have a policy. I don't I... care about your policy. I want cash. It is my money. Mrs. Reinhardt, let's uh, step into my office and see if we can resolve this. The reason the bank has the policy of questioning customers about large cash withdrawals is because it means that the customer is often being victimized in a confidence scheme. I appreciate your concern. But I am not a senile old lady who's being flim-flammed. I have the opportunity to make a short-term investment of $25,000 and get a 12% return. It's very handsome. I don't know of anyone who's offering 12% at this time. Precisely why I want to make the investment. The why in cash? Let me give you a cashier's check for the $25,000. Cash. I need cash. My agent, he insists on it. How about a wire transfer? We can have the money move from our bank to the credit of your agent, whoever it is. Won't work. I'm trying to act on your behalf. Why don't I talk to your agent for you? He insists on cash, and the investment is confidential. But don't you see? No legitimate investment needs cash. We can offer you any number of perfectly I have instruments. over $30,000 in this bank, and I am going to withdraw all of it. I can't wait to try it out. Your father's skillful hands always made you feel clumsy. Clever, clever hands you've got. It, it took me three days. I used the things you saw in Dr. Smith's basement and it worked. Now we're ready for Dr. Smith, huh? If we should ever have to uh, neutralize him, we can do it quietly and efficiently. Wait a minute. You said that would only be as a last resort. Only in self-defense or in defense of Susan Reinert. But if it should come to that, being quiet and secretive might be very advantageous. You remember, the man has criminal connections. We might not want it known that we were the neutralizers. I don't know if the Home Office will approve such a huge life insurance policy on a school teacher, Mrs. Reinert. Well, my future husband and I have decided that we should each take out maximum coverage because we'll be traveling in Europe. I believe this policy does cover me if I'm living in a foreign country. Actually, uh, we're thinking of settling in England. Well, it's a lot of insurance, no matter oh, where you sit. Oh, and I would like you to write the policy so that my future husband is the sole beneficiary. What about your children? I would like him to have total control over their financial destiny. I would like him to raise the children rather than their father. I feel that he can provide a more academic and intellectual environment than my ex-husband ever could. And uh, what's the name of the beneficiary? William, Sidney, Bradfield, Jr. Now, 
You've testified that the bogus armored car courier had salt and pepper hair. I believe you called it gray streaked. And you've testified that the bogus courier was clean shaven. And of course, Dr. Smith has a mustache today. Now, how can you be so sure that the man who stole the money from you is the same man who's sitting in this courtroom? There was something about his face. It's not an ordinary face. I'm 100% sure. Can you describe for the jury your relationship with the defendant, Dr. Smith? Yes. I'm the leader of the Upper Marion Teachers Association, and that position often puts me into conflict with Dr. Smith. But when I realized after his arrest that the date of the crime coincided with the date that I was in Ocean City and happened to encounter Dr. Smith, I realized that I had to come forward with the information. So Dr. Smith is not what you would call a social friend? No. He means nothing to me, nor I to him. I assure you that I hate to get involved in these kind of things, but it's my duty. Did anyone else see you and Dr. Smith together during your casual encounter that day in Ocean City? Well, Dr. Smith and I went to visit a colleague who has a beach house at the shore, but he wasn't home. I did ask directions of an elderly gardener who lived on the street, and he might remember that encounter. He might not remember the exact date. Now, Mr. Bradfield, you've testified that uh, you were looking for a restaurant in Ocean City when you happened to run into your principal, Dr. Smith. Were you hungry? I was famished. I hadn't eaten all day. Well, if you were famished, why didn't you eat? Dr. Smith suggested we not. You didn't eat because Dr. Smith said you couldn't? <laughs> not to be facetious, Mr. Bradfield, but in matters of physical need, could Dr. Smith's judgment overprivilege yours? What? Well, it wasn't a question of... It wasn't a judgment of privilege. What was it, then? I don't think that's relevant. Just answer the question, Mr. Bradfield. Just answer the question. Now, you've heard Mr. Bradfield testify that he and Dr. Smith went to visit a friend on the day in question. And you've heard him say that uh, he stopped his car and asked directions as to how to get to his friend's place. Have you ever seen Mr. Bradfield? Yes, I saw that man with a beard. And did he stop and ask directions as he testified? Yes, sir. Then is his testimony correct? Oh, no, sir. The date's all wrong. He ain't even got the right week. That was my 50th anniversary. I know exactly where I was the day I saw him. You couldn't be mistaken? Well, I may be in my 70s, but I, I still got a good working mind. He's way off on the date. Thank you. The jury was out a very short time. Did you have any doubt as to the guilt of Dr. Smith? None at all. How about when he produced the alibi witness, Mr. Bradfield? Well, we certainly didn't believe Bradfield. Thank you very much. This is Gloria Young for the 6 o'clock news. I'm glad Dr. Smith was convicted. I only wish they hadn't let him out on bail till his sentencing. I want you to stay away from that lunatic. I don't care if he has sworn to kill Susan Reinert or half of Upper Marion. I don't care about Dr. Smith. I hate that man. Then why are you taking it like this? Look at me. I'm 45 years old. What have I got in my life? My father was an important man. He had everything he wanted. Look at us. What do we have? We've got each other. Quit comparing yourself to your father. He had money, so what? Hundreds of kids have furthered their education because of you. You're a great teacher. You inspire people. Look at Vince. Look how he looks up to you. And Chris, they idolize you. Why are you so depressed by this stupid trial? Because all I have is my integrity. I thought people could sense that integrity. The jury foreman ridiculed my testimony. They didn't believe me.
What's up? I came as soon as I could. Dr. Smith is being sentenced Monday. This looks like it. This week is his last chance to kill Susan Reinert. I intend to guard her house every night. Well, maybe he's changed his mind. With prison coming up, maybe he's... No, he hasn't. Come with me. Nitric acid. Dr. Smith gave it to me to hold from. He's afraid the authorities will come in and search his house again. He said he'll call me on the night he wants it. But that's when I'm finally going to nail him. Maybe you could keep the acid at your place. I don't want Sue to see it. Bill, there's money in this bag. Yes, I know. I took it out of the bank. It comes from a secret bank account. There must be $10,000 here. There's more than 20. <laughs> it's taken me years to save it. It's for a boat. I didn't dare let on to Sue what it was about. She'd be wanting all sorts of things she really couldn't afford. But why is it in the car? I have my reasons. How much is in that bundle? See, what if Dr. Smith does attack Susan Reinert? What if, despite my best efforts, that he's successful? What if I'm drawn into it? Oh, why would you be? You're not going to believe this. I've discovered that that crazy woman has named me the beneficiary on her will. She will never stop pursuing me. She can't get it through her head. I am not interested in her or being the stepfather to her children. Bill. No one would think someone would want to kill her for her estate. She's a school teacher. She doesn't have any money. Chris, think. If she's murdered by that lunatic, the police will find the will with my name on it. Who'll be drawn into it? Me. I saved this money, Chris. This dream of a sailboat is for my friends and me. Friends who love the sea. Friends like you. Well, one thing's for sure. You can't leave it sitting here in the car. business with Dr. Smith has me so confused. What are we going to do with all this money? Well, how about a safety deposit box? Good, but what if the police find my name on the box and get a court order to open it? Well, I could take a box out in my name. I got no connection with Susan Reiner. Yes, you could put the money in a bank out in Westchester or someplace and not put my name on the withdrawal card. I'll just use my name. Well, you better get a card for Shelley, too. In case you're not available, she could get the money out in a hurry and she'll be back from college in a few days. Well, okay. Oh, I thought of something else. What if the worst does happen? What if Susan Reinert is murdered and the money does come to light and I'm accused of complicity? Well, our fingerprints are all over it. I'd never check it for fingerprints, Bill, and besides, it's your money. Well, I don't want anyone to know that, and they always check everything for fingerprints. Do you think we could wipe them off? Yeah. Yeah, wipe each bill. been with Jay Smith, I don't want to hear about it. I've got to protect Susan Ryan. I don't want to hear about it.
Karen's wonderful with Molly. We love it when you leave them with us overnight. It'll be the last time for a long while. Kids and I are gonna leave as soon as term's over and we sold all our stuff. Well, won't you and Bill marry before you go? No, we're gonna get married in England. I think it's better that way. Bill's afraid that Ken might try to stop us. I've never understood your fear about that. You and Ken have a friendly divorce. Well, as Bill points out, it may not stay friendly once Ken realizes that his kids are going to live in a foreign country. I mean, he could try to stop us. He does have visitation rights, after all. It's hard to believe you've been able to keep your relationship with Bill Bradfield a secret from everyone. I haven't I told you about it. My therapy group. Bill would have a fit if he knew I told anyone. Definitely not a secret sharer. Hey, Mom! No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <sighs> you know, I just have one problem with Bill, and it really bothers me. What's that? It's Dr. Smith's alibi testimony. I was with Bill in Ocean City that weekend that he said he saw Jay Smith. I mean, I wasn't with him every minute, but would you think that if he saw Dr. Smith, he would have said something? You'd think so. Well, he didn't. I as much as hinted that he perjured himself for Dr. Smith. Well, why would he do that? No idea. Well, he promised me he'd explain it all. You know, Beverly called and told me she went to a diner in Lancaster Pike last week and saw Bill there talking with Jay Smith. I can't believe it. He told me he hasn't seen Jay Smith since the trial. Beverly says she wasn't mistaken. He swears under oath that he was with Jay Smith in Ocean City when maybe he wasn't, and he tells me he hasn't seen him when he did? I don't understand. I don't either. Well, I can assure you that before I marry him, I will get a reasonable explanation about all these little secrets. Mom, I'm gonna give Molly my doll, okay? If you like. This is my baby, but not as your age. What are you gonna call her? Karen. <laughs> That's a good name. Now, we'll always have a Karen, too. Hey, Biv, wanna play bridge tonight? Uh-oh. Guess who's doing dishes? <laughs> Karen and I play Michael and Biv. The losers do the dishes, and the winners go and bring home ice cream. Well, I better get going. I wanna be ready by the time Bill shows up. Okay, bye, Mom. Bye, honey. Don't eat too much ice cream. <laughs> bye, sweetie. Bye, Mom. See you tomorrow. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bill? Bill, please stop. Well, can't we just talk about it? Are you excited about going to England with Bill? Uh, I guess so. Do you like Bill? Well? Yeah? You can tell me. I guess it's okay to talk to you, isn't it? Sure. I'm your mom's best friend and she's told me everything. Well, some things he does bug me, you know? Like what? I mean, he's always hugging and kissing everybody. And, like, sometimes I make him breakfast when he stays over. I'll say, would you like some pancakes? And he says, sure. And he eats the pancakes and says, they're great. And then Michael will say, would you like a bologna sandwich? And he says, sure. And he eats a bologna sandwich and says, that's great, too. Well, nobody eats pancakes or bologna sandwich for breakfast and thinks it's great. Sometimes I don't think he's a very sincere person. We've got to talk about Dr. Smith. He's become extremely dangerous to Susan Reiner, despite my best efforts. I'm so worried about you. I'll be so relieved when the police can be brought in. I'm 
I'm gonna have to leave for summer school earlier than I thought. If Dr. Smith is not sent to prison at his sentencing hearing, Susan Reinhardt is still in danger. If something uh, should happen to Susan Reinhardt and I'm drawn into a police investigation, I wouldn't want them to find out about the safety deposit box. My life savings are in that box. What do you want me to do? I want you to take the money and hide it at your house. If all's well, Mrs. Reinhardt is okay, I'll call you and you can bring the money back to the bank. Do you understand? Looks like a storm coming. Dr. Smith is sentenced on Monday. Yeah, I know. Thank goodness it'll all be over at last. That means he has three nights left to attack Susan Reiner. I am so tired, I don't know how I can continue to protect her. Sue and Chris want me to go to the shore with them tonight. <laughs> they think I'm on the verge of some kind of collapse. You do look exhausted. You should get away. Have a rest before you leave Monday for some school. How can I leave her? Bill, Jay Smith is a lunatic. Don't you see a lot of his talk? It's, it's lunatic talk. She'll be okay. It's you I'm worried about. Will you come with us? I can't. I started my summer job already. I have to work tomorrow. If I'm gonna go, I need you to come with me. If I'm gonna be far away and I can't protect her, I need my closest friends near me to verify my whereabouts. Listen to me. You have done all you could. You're letting this thing become an obsession. Now, I'm sure she'll be okay. You've been like a brother to me. But I have never needed your loyalty more than I do now. If I'm going to go, I want you with me. You must come. I'll call my boss. How oh, about I lose the job? Michael. All right, Michael. Oh, you. All right, come on. Oh, nice smooth stroke. Remember? Okay. Okay, just a little one. There you go. Just take them, not tell you. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Even if she isn't her, you think she'd give you some explanation. She's so secretive lately. She didn't even get a chance to say goodbye to the kids.
I'm going to miss you, honey. We have a few more days before I have to go home, Grandma. Don't be sad. Oh, I hope Susan's not going to drive in this weather. I hope they'll be all right. Hailstones in June, it's unnatural. Maybe we should call Chris and tell him to forget it. Looks like Bill's not gonna show. I wonder if it's a woman. Oh, I'm so sick of it. This whole Dr. Smith thing could be just a cover-up for another romantic interlude. He's not interested in romantic interludes. Oh, he's very interested. Oh, in his own way, he's very interested. He feeds on adoration. Our insatiable friend, William Bradfield. Call Chris and tell him we're on the way. Come on. Let's go! He's exhausted, utterly exhausted. So am I. I need him away at summer school more than he needs to be away. I'm afraid this is the weekend. He's gonna try to kill her. Easy, Bill, take it easy. Let's forget about Dr. Smith. You've done all you could. I tried to save her even tonight. I followed his car into the vicinity of her house. I drove around the block 14 times. I lost him in the hailstorm. There's nothing more I can do. It's all in God's hands. Maybe it's more than just a midlife crisis. Maybe Bill's going insane. This is the most depressing day of my life. Vince? Vince? I need to go to a church. Take me to a church. Places to spend the weekend in Harrisburg. Yeah, you and me both. Let's hope we can't see Three Mile Island from the hotel room window. Would that give you nightmares or what? <laughs> hey, that hatchback's open. Somebody's gonna get ripped off. Ah, come on, I'm too tired to worry about it. Let's get a drink. I am beat. Yeah, me too. Looks like just a bag of laundry, anyways. Yeah, probably. get on the road this afternoon, we can finally relax. Dr. Smith will be in jail. We don't have to worry about Susan Reinhardt anymore. Let's hope. No, we would have heard something on the news. She's safe. Thank God. Looks like she was hogtied, maybe with chain. Ligatures go all around her body. Somebody beat her up pretty bad, too. Her right eye's the worst. She left the world the same way she entered, in fetal position. You Jack Holtz? Yeah. 
Got the make in the car for you. It's registered to a Susan G. Reinert, Bardmore. It's near Philadelphia, isn't it? Beyond the main line. If it's her, she's 100 miles from home. No purse, no keys, no clothes. Trash bag. Hey, Doug. Dust this comb. 79th US ARCOM. I don't know what that means. Well, I think I got everything in the car. I don't know. It's weird. But... Well, I'm in a car littered with hamburger boxes and stuffed toys and a Cub Scout book and a church pamphlet. I found the dildo under the seat. I mean, it's right where you put him missing. That makes sense. Sir, the call was phoned in at 5.20 a.m. by a guy who called himself Larry Brown. He said there was a sick woman in a parked car in the Holstein parking lot. Car's parked so it's easily found. The hatchback is open. He did everything but light flares to make sure it was found. Larry Brown got tired waiting for somebody to find her. Sue? Yeah. I brought the typewriter down. Would you mind if I took it to New Mexico? I'll get it. No, no, no. It's too heavy I for you. I can handle it. Okay, it's in the hall. Vince? There, all set. Thank you. I thank you from my heart for standing by me all these months. I know it's been hard for you, but I'll never forget your loyalty. Dr. Smith should be getting sentenced by now. Yes, and Susan Reinert's safe. I've done my job. I hope he gets 10 years. Could you help Sue with this? Thank you, Vince. I got it. Thank you for putting up with me. Love me. Always. If I had a choice, I probably wouldn't. But I don't seem to have a choice. Have a good summer. Me too. It's the duty of a school principal to provide an example of probity to the young minds committed to his charge. This defendant has dishonored his profession in a monstrous way. And it's rather interesting that we do not sense today any real remorse. The court sentences a defendant to pay the costs of prosecution and to make restitution to Sears Roebuck stores and to undergo imprisonment in a state institution for an indefinite term, the minimum of which shall be five and a half years and the maximum of which shall be 12 years. My car is in the parking lot. See that my brother gets it. Trooper Lou DeSantis, Pennsylvania State Police. I'd like you to come to Harrisburg with me for an identification. Uh, a woman's been killed, and we think she might be your ex-wife, Susan G. Reiner. It looks like tape residue around her mouth and nose. Looks like? She was uh, chained like a dog. Nobody chains a dog like that. Quite a few contusions on her. She got punched around. Any ideas I caused the death? Well, she wasn't uh, stabbed, shot, or strangled. Let's just call it asphyxiation until the lab report comes in. I can see that she stopped breathing. Any needle marks? I uh, couldn't find any. Of course, there's lots of contusions. Uh, a needle mark could get lost in them. We want vaginal swabs, samples of both head and pubic hair, both cut and pulled. The works. When did she die? Well, there's uh, lividity on both sides, so uh, she lay... Uh, 
maybe eight hours uh, on each side after she was dead. That and uh, absence of rigor. I'd say she died late Saturday night or early Sunday morning. What is it? Looks like red fiber. I saw Susan Friday afternoon. I was playing baseball at the father-son scout meeting. Who has she seen? Men, I mean. I can't say for sure. There have been a lot of rumors about her and a fellow teacher, Bill Bradfield. It's been going on for some time. It's a strange relationship. I mean, they're never seen together. Now, how do you know there's a relationship? Well, there's been talk among her friends. Who is her best friend? Probably Pat Schnur. That's another teacher at Upper Marion. Oh, by the way, the kids at my parents are at uh, Pat's. What kids? on the phone. It sounds like trouble. Okay, Jack. Don't give me no bad news. I'm just about to start my waterfall. Okay. Okay. I'll be there as quick as I can. I'll make you a thermos of coffee, keep you awake on your trip to Harrisburg. Oh, and don't forget to take your vitamins this time, okay? You take Jason to your folks' house? Yeah. How do you think? How do you think? He's a cop's kid. Too bad his mother's so far away. Joe, she's better off, I'm better off, and that means Jason is too. Just because I work a lot of weird hours for a guy named Joe Van North, that doesn't have a thing to do with the divorce. It would have happened anyway. Okay? That's quite a speech for you, kid. Well, I'm trying to get more articulate so I can talk with a bunch of college graduates. When I took you under my wing, the biggest word you knew was delicatessen. Well, you hang around, you learn. about your sister's love life from a teacher friend, Pat Schnarr. Yeah, Pat knew my sister very well. Did you know that your sister was going to take the children to England this summer and marry her friend, Bill Bradfield? I never met Bill Bradfield. I've heard about him from Pat. There was uh, some kind of secret romance going on, and Pat was one of the few people that Susan confided in. Also, last December, she phoned me to ask if I wanted to go in on a large investment she was making through her friend, Bill. I assumed it was Bill Bradfield. Did you know about this? A will? Yes, I'm the executor. Karen and Michael are her beneficiaries. Not anymore. A lawyer called as soon as the case hit the tube. She made a new will. Is 
executor, William Sidney Bradfield, Jr. Sole beneficiary, William Sidney Bradfield, Jr. This is impossible. Your sister did it, and she had her reasons. Sergeant, we only received a small inheritance. Our mother had some timberland, but nothing worth killing over. Surely you don't think William Bradfield would murder my sister for that? We left in a hell of a hurry, right in the middle of a storm. Well, maybe she needed something from the store before it closed for the night. Uh, maybe. Jack, take a look at this. Funny notations. I N V. Then it be investment bill. About the same time, she called her brother and asked if he wanted to get in on it. OK, let's take that calendar. Yeah. There's a pile of folded clothes on each bed. They're going to Allentown on Saturday morning. She was getting things ready. Ken Reiner said Michael was wearing a Philadelphia Phillies baseball shirt last time he saw him. Kid change his dirty shirt before they ran out the door that night. And her copy of the will isn't with any of her documents, her divorce decree and so forth. So? What if she had to go to an important meeting? One that would make her take her copy of the will, one that would make the kid change his shirt, a meeting called very suddenly. You think she was lured out that night? Got it. Thanks for calling. We'll be in touch. Hey, DeSantis. What are you doing in Philly on a Saturday night? Got her motive. I know. I just got a call from New York Life. No, not New York Life. She was insured by USAA. Well, well, well. Looks like Susan Reiner went and got herself some life insurance from two companies. If I got it right, she's worth more than three quarters of a million. Dead, of course. Mr. William Sidney Bradfield, Jr. Her future husband, according to the insurance agent. I guess it's time to visit Mr. Bradfield. I'm Sergeant Joe Van Nort, State Police. This is Jack Holtz. Oh, come in, please. I, I was surprised to get your call, Sergeant. I really can't tell you anything about Susan Reinert. I just know what I've read in the newspapers and seen on television. This is our neighbor, Vincelitis. Pleased to meet you. Can we uh, sit down? Oh, yes, please. Uh, right here. Never been that much of a reader myself. I like to hunt and fish and roam around the woods. I like a book sometimes. Not a murder mystery, though. Did you come to talk to Mr. Bradfield? Why do you say that? Well, he's a friend of Susan's. Sort of. He's sort of an advisor, really, at times. Where is he? New Mexico. He's there taking summer classes with another teacher, Chris Pappas, sort of a friend also. When did he leave? Um, Monday afternoon. Um, we, we all spent the weekend together at the shore, Cape May. Um, Bill, Vince, Chris Pappas, and myself, we all teach at Upper Marion. We're starting to think maybe he was somehow involved with the victim, Mrs. Reiner. Oh, no, no not in any, any way like that. Involved, no. How, then? Well, she pursued him. She was always throwing herself at Bill. She was a needy, lonely person. Yeah. Bill took it on himself to be a personal advisor to her. Some of her neighbors say they saw his VW around her house uh, quite a bit, at night even. Well, that was like Bill. And sure, he may have visited, but... And in the morning. I don't believe he ever spent the night at that... W at Susan Reinert's house. Uh, no, no, I don't believe that. Did he ever... Spend the night away from home? Well, yes. Um, he often went to the shore, to Annapolis, to other places for weekend seminars, lectures, things like that. Bill has his private ways. We weren't married, but I know that he never... Excuse me. I'm not surprised you're here so soon. Uh, okay, just... 
You see, we, uh... We knew that if anything ever happened to her, he might get drawn into the investigation because... Vince? <clears throat> um, call for you. For me? Hello? Vince, Sue says you're talking to them. Of course, but... Don't tell them anything. My God, don't say a word! Not about Jay Smith or that woman's will. But don't you think they've already found the will? Look, Bill, you can explain how she chased you as far as Jay Smith is concerned. Dr. Smith has friends. Criminal friends. If they find out that you've been talking to the police about him, you could get in serious trouble. They'll have to find out about him. Not from me. And not from you. Don't you see? Not yet. Vince, my name on the will makes me their number one suspect. All they want to do is arrest someone. They don't care who at this point. If you say the wrong thing to them, you make them think that I have something to do with it, I could wind up in the electric chair. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll tell them I don't know anything more. Or I'll, I'll tell them. I don't know what I'll tell them. Remember, Vince, you could be implicated. You knew just as much about Jay Smith and Susan Reinert as I did. English. We all teach English. He teaches Latin and Greek as well, and often he gives these seminars. Excuse me. Mr. Vilaitis, I was wondering how well you know your former principal, Jay Smith, and I was told that you gave him a, a nickname, the Prince of Darkness. I'm sorry, gentlemen. This the whole thing has me so upset. I, I just uh, have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm not feeling well. Maybe I could call you uh, tomorrow or uh, or later, maybe. Uh, goodbye. I'd like to ask you what you think of this uh, letter that we have found in Susan Reinert's house. A letter to Mr. Bradfield. It's 8 o'clock. I'd like to go to bed so I can turn off my head and my body. This morning, I awoke needing you as usual. My breasts yearn to brush against your chest. My legs want to curve over yours. My arms want to hold you. My hands tracing your Stop. face. Stop! That's a Susan Ryder sexual fantasy. Nothing more. Sorry to interrupt your classes. I'm Van Nort. This is Holtz. Let's uh, sit down. I'm sorry to have to meet you under such terrible circumstances. Did you have a good trip? It was OK. We're here to ask you about your uh, relationship with Susan Reinert. What relationship? I was a friend. I was shocked to hear about her death. I, uh, I wonder if we could uh, talk to you separately. No, I, I don't think so. I think we'll stay together. OK, we'll, uh, we'll start with you. How often did you go to the Reinert house? I'm sorry, I can't answer any specific questions about Mrs. Reinert. My attorney in Philadelphia instructed me by phone to refer all questions to him. Who is your attorney? John Paul Curran. Two R's. How about you, Mr. Pappas? How long did you know Mrs. Reinert? Well, he's not allowed to answer either. And who's his attorney? The same man. Look, if you'll just submit your questions in writing to our attorney, perhaps he'll give us permission to answer them. We're trying to find two missing children. We need your help. I, I wish I could help you, but my first concern is my studies. What are you studying? The great books of the Western world. The Bible's a great book. It says, thou shalt not kill. We're investigating a murder, and I would think that you'd want to cooperate. I wish I could help you. Really, I do. Seems like a nice place for a summer school. Lots of pretty girls clanging around in buckskins and Indian jewelry. Do you like Indian jewelry? Not particularly. Oh, he can talk. Let's go, Jack. 
I can understand how frustrated you must feel. Submit any question you like to our attorney. It's been a terrible business. You're working very hard. How long would the state police stay on a major case like this? There ain't too much to bring you up to date on. She died of a lethal dose of morphine, maybe on Saturday night. The suspect or suspects that took her to Harrisburg wanted us to find her. Only not until Sunday night or Monday morning. That would be when Bradfield and Sue Myers and Velitis and Pappas were all at the shore together, if they were together at all times. As far as I'm concerned, they could all be in on it. Sarge, what about the cone? The War College in Carlisle says the insignia belongs to an Army Reserve unit. Now, the interesting thing is, a colonel in that unit, Dr. J. Smith, was Bradfield's ex-principal. In fact, he reported to Harrisburg for sentencing the Monday she was found. Nah. I don't like it. Too obvious, too pat. Bradfield probably threw that comb in the car to draw attention to his principal, who's in trouble on another crime. Bradfield's our man. Him and this Jay Smith are connected only in the same way that pus and mucus are connected. How about the 25,000? Well, we know she withdrew 30,000 from her bank about the same time she was making a phony investment. Now, this is an investment certificate for 25 or 12 percent. We checked with the investment company, and it's a fake. So Bradfield scammed her out of 25 big ones before talking her into loading up on life insurance. Hard to prove anything as long as they stay constant. They ain't going to stay constant. Now, listen. The real reason I called this meeting is that we're getting some help starting Monday. We're being joined by the FBI. FBI? What? We're forming a joint task force. We're getting 18 FBI agents. Oh, you gotta be kidding. We'll be outnumbered by the feds. Well, how did the FBI get jurisdiction to come in? The governor and our U.S. senator cooked up a pretext that maybe the Reiner kids were kidnapped and are being held for ransom. Maybe in some other state. It's bull, but the FBI is coming. And I only got this to say. They ain't so much as going to set foot in the Reinert house without a trooper present. They ain't cops in any sense. They'd like nothing more than to come in here and make us look bad. Well, this is a state investigation. And they're going to find out real quick who's in charge. Me. That's who. It's hard to know which way to turn. It's as if those kids have just disappeared right off the face of the earth. There's, there's John. Sergeant Van Nort. I'm Don Redden. I'll be special agent in charge. You'll be in charge of them. This is Agent Matt Mullen. Sergeant. I'll be in charge of the Reiner Task Force. We're only here to assist you in any way we can. You're the boss. This is Jack Holtz. I was assigned to Harrisburg for a while. I know Jack. How's it going? Good. How you doing? Tell me something, Redden. Any of your people ever investigate a murder? Even a teeny little killing of a human being? If it was part of a kidnapping or a bank robbery, but we'll be glad to learn whatever we can from you, sir. Sarge, Jay Smith's wife just died in Bryn Mawr Hospital. Looks like we won't be interviewing her after all. Guess you heard about the comb and Jay Smith. Yes, we like that lead. Dr. Jay Smith sounds uh, promising. Bradfield's our man. If you want to chase around after a Jay Smith connection, go ahead. The state police are going after Bradfield. I think we will, then, if that's OK with you. While you're at it, somebody phoned in to say there's a devil cult in Upper Marion has the kids. Yeah, we've already heard about the devil cult and that Jay Smith is known as the Prince of Darkness. Well, I don't think you boys will find the Reiner kids, but you might turn up with Rosemary's baby. All I can tell you is that I was at the shore on the weekend of the murder. I left on Friday afternoon and came back on Sunday afternoon. The house had closed escrow and was technically mine. But I agreed to let Dr. Smith stay down here in the basement apartment until Monday because he told me he was going to be sentenced and he might go to prison. I thought it wouldn't hurt to let the poor man have a place to sleep for the weekend. Did you see him when you came back on Sunday? No. But I heard him down here in the basement. And I heard his car drive away in the afternoon. Mrs. Steiner, we'd like to cut some carpet samples from the red carpet upstairs. Well, we'll cut them so you won't notice. I suppose so. Tell me something else. Why is there only carpet padding here in the basement? 
Was there a carpet here when you moved in? Mm-hmm. But it was wet, and I was afraid it would get moldy. Wet? How? Rain? No, more like it had been, you know, washed. And where is it now? I had it hauled to the dump. No comment. Mr. Bradfield, will you all come with me, please? You'll be assigned down there for now. That's the basement. My office is... The next. school district's decided you're all relieved of teaching duties. You'll be given miscellaneous paperwork for the time being. You can use the rooms in the basement. We've got to hang together. Don't use the word hang. Bill, I can't stand it down here. I gotta get out. Get some air. Get my hands for a while. Get my mind to rest. Chris, call me. You know my transmission's going. That's impossible. We just had the car repaired. I can tell you, it's falling out. Do you think? The FBI is sabotaging it. Still, please, let's keep our paranoia under control. <clears throat> you know, I really think I'd rather work alone. I have to find somewhere else to uh, do my work if I can figure out what work I'm supposed to do. says Susan Reiner withdrew a lot of money from her bank account. So? It says she asked her brother to make an investment for her with someone named Bill. Well, she told me that she went to pick up strangers at singles bars. Now, any one of them could have been named Bill. I'll explain this. Oh, damn it. I can't. She was neurotic. She was crazy. I didn't know anything about her stupid investments or the insurance. It was a plot to trap me in a relationship. I don't want the money. I don't want the insurance. The paper says you're trying to probate the will. You do want the money. It's not for myself. I want to get it to use as a reward for finding the children. If you're that worried about the children, then why can't we tell the police about Jay Smith? Why are you still holding back? What do you want from me, huh? You want me to say I murdered her? Is that what you want? Tell me the whole truth! All right, I confess. I'll draw you a diagram. I took the kids, I gave them... This is nothing to joke about! You're acting insane! Why shouldn't I act insane? I'm innocent! You're treating me like a killer! People I love, you! Chick Stevens, sir. I'm with the FBI. How do you do, sir? Ah, uh, call me Chick. <clears throat> yes, sir. How long have you been smoking? Uh, I just started today. Let me start by saying the government's like a bus. A bus? A bus. Anyway, the bus makes certain stops as it makes its rounds. 
And people are allowed on the bus as long as they get to the bus stop at a certain time. If they don't, it's too late to get on the bus. I want on the bus. Jay Smith murders people. So do his friends. I, I don't want to be killed. I just, I just want to teach English. You're on the bus. You got to the bus stop on time, Vince. You're ours now. Let's talk about Bill Bradfield. What he told you about Dr. Smith. The lightest story about Bradfield claiming to be protecting Reinhardt from Jay Smith proves nothing in itself. I think we're all convinced that Reinhardt never even saw Jay Smith outside of school. Does Bradfield know that the lightest is talking? Not yet. What we really need is for Sue Myers or Christopher Pappas to come in. Vince just doesn't know enough about all the weird goings on. I, for one, ain't never been convinced that Jay Smith has anything to do with Bradfield or the Reiner killing. We have an honest disagreement on that, Joe. If Bradfield did conspire with Smith, do you think that Smith knew that Bradfield talked about him to his pals? No way. Dr. Jay's a loner. Bradfield needs to have lots of friends around him. And I know it seems crazy to spread the Jay Smith story among all those school teachers. Think. It's not as dumb as it sounds. He was spreading the story to people he could control. All of them had spent their entire life in a classroom. They'd had either limited relationships with the opposite sex or none whatsoever. They were all insecure, naive, vulnerable people. He can say that by telling everyone of the threat, his conduct was not consistent with conspiracy to murder. Bradfield's a cheap, kind man, nothing more. And he's got a very big mouth. And I'm gonna get him because of that big mouth. He's gonna talk his way into jail. And Matt and Lou are on their way to California to interview little Shelly now. Maybe she'll agree to talk. Let's sit here for a second. How long have you known Bill Bradfield, Shelley? He was my teacher in English and Greek. He's the most brilliant teacher I've ever had. Well, we've heard that it's more than a teacher-pupil relationship, Shelley. You're lovers, aren't you? Not in the way you mean. In, in what way, then? Not in a sexual way. William doesn't care for that kind of relationship. He lives on a higher moral plane. Well, how do you explain Susan Reinhardt's neighbor seeing his car there all night? Well, if it was there, I'm sure there was a good reason. Not what you're implying. You could never understand William Bradfield. The lab in Washington was able to size the link marks on her body because there was an old Time magazine lying there beside her. We were able to make a size comparison with the print on the magazine. Not bad, Matt. Well, luckily, back when Jay Smith was first arrested, the local police photographed everything in his basement. We identified the lock and sized the chain to the known size of the lock. Four different forensic pathologists agreed that the link marks on her body were identical to the chains in these pictures. I'm impressed. Well, we can't prove that she was bound with this chain. But she was bound with a chain just like it. You ought to cut down, you know, there's four packs worth in that ashtray. You sound like Betty. Let's get out of here. If you could look at that work Matt Mullen did on those chains, that's pretty good police work, Joe. The super prep did some decent work for a change. OK. Maybe I was wrong about Smith being involved. From now on, the state police are going to take a very close look at Dr. J.C. Smith. I think maybe on the afternoon of the crime, Smith and Bradfield drove two cars to Harrisburg and left Smith's car there for him to get back home. People say the old Prince of Darkness had the eyes of a goat. Well, that's one head I ain't got in the wall of my cabin. Goat. Six months. I'm supposed to be on this case six days. I'm starting to forget what Harrisburg looks like. I count your blessings. Why do I have to keep the flyer going all over the country? Those kids are dead. Stupid woman. Um, what stupid woman? Susan Reinhardt. She walked into that with a kid on each hand. She got what she deserved. What Susan Reinhardt got was beaten, gagged, 
stripped naked and chained like an animal in a slaughterhouse. Then she got to watch or hear whatever they did to her kids. And then she got to lie in her own filth for 36 hours, thinking about her pathetic love for a guy who brought her and her kids to that. When she was finally given the fatal injection, she probably welcomed it. No one deserves a death like that. No one. Boys like some coffee. Uh, would I? No. Oh. I've got knees like a medieval nun. <sighs> Mrs. Steiner, on the night that Susan Reiner's body was found, Jay Smith made two calls from his phone at 8.37 p.m., one to his lawyer's office and one to his lawyer's home. Are you sure that you didn't hear him coming or going on Sunday evening? I only heard him leave on Sunday afternoon. I didn't know what time he came back until I heard about those calls. You know, I hate to think he could have had her in his car when he left here. By the way, where did he say he was that weekend when I was gone? Right here, in and out, visiting his wife at Bryn Mawr Hospital. Only no one saw him there. Absolutely no one. He says that you saw him that weekend, right here. Well, that's a lie. I was gone from Friday till Sunday, and he was here all alone. I hope to hear you say that again someday. In court. The old car that this letter was found in used to belong to a relative of Jay Smith who got all of Mrs. Smith's personal effects after her death. Dr. Jay wrote the letter from prison one day after Susan Reiner's body was found. Please note the important points. When you get well enough, give these things some attention. Among things to take care of, car. Now this is Jay Smith's own car he's talking about. First, clean it up thoroughly. We must throw away most of the stuff. Uh, I can't stress the importance of this. Clean out and then clean up. Rug. Downstairs rug is full of matchsticks, cigarettes, old marijuana, etc. from Stephanie, Eddie, and their friends. Every time I walk on that rug, something new pops out. It must go. I'll write more later about disposal. I love you, Jay. It's a letter within a letter. Dr. J was hoping that his wife would get well enough to get the rug out of the house that was now in the possession of Edna Steiner. He wasn't worried about marijuana in a house he didn't even own anymore. What J Smith was worried about was forensic evidence. And he wanted her to clean up his car, which is now in the possession of his brother in Delaware. Matt? We got the lab report back from Washington. The fibers from Edna Steiner's upstairs carpet are polyester and could be from the same dye lot as the fibers taken from Susan Reinert's hair. Now to the sweep of the downstairs carpet pad. Jack and I found a hair. It's identical to the samples taken from Susan Reinert's head in 21 out of 25 characteristics. It's not a fingerprint, but it's pretty good. It's one more little link in a circumstantial chain. We're going to take a look at Jay Smith's car as soon as we get an OK from the Attorney General of Delaware. It's been out in the elements for about a year now, but we may come up with something. There's nothing in this car. Looks like we struck out. I wish we had a warrant months ago. We didn't have probable cause months ago. Yeah, we might as well give up.
make of this? Any prints on it? After all this time, not a chance. P stands for Phillies, Philadelphia Phillies? No, Phillies colors are red and white. All right, I'm gonna work on this in my spare time. I got a feeling this pin doesn't belong in this car. Take this quickly. What is it? My lawyer tells me that he expects the police to indict me for the theft of Susan Leinert's $25,000, and you might be compelled to testify. What? In this envelope is a list of questions they might ask you and some ideas of mine on the ways that they should be answered. This, this is scary, though. Chris, you know that the $25,000 is my life savings, and you know I did not trick Susan Reinert into any phony investment. You believe me, don't you? I can't conceive of you being involved in something like that. Well, if you don't believe that I'm a thief, you couldn't possibly think that I'd conspire to kill Susan Reinert. So even if you were indicted with me for the theft of her money, I know you'd hold firm. I knew I could count on you. Me indicted? What have I done? Think about it. What is wrong with you? Have you never seen a lawyer before? <laughs> Actually, no. I've never had the need. Well, he's on our side. All you have to do is verify what I'm telling him. Bill, for the last time, please tell him about Jay Smith. Let him decide whether or not you should go to the FBI. Why are you staring at me? You've talked to them, haven't you? Yes. And you should, too. They're, they're nothing like you think they are. They're, they're, they've treated me... Who else have you told? A priest. I, I told a priest. And I told my parents. You've killed the priest. You've killed your parents. Stop the car. Jay Smith is in prison. The, the FBI agent promised me Jay Smith can't harm us. Stop the car. Maybe you can't make a rational decision anymore, Bill. Is there a friend? I've got to... I loved you like a brother. And you've killed me. What's for dinner? I lost my appetite. Wrong. Other than the fact that we might all get indicted for murder. Oh, for God's sake, will you stop? Oh, by the way, you got a a book of Ezra Pound poems today from an old friend. He says he still loves you madly. In fact, you're the only man he's ever really loved. How dare you? How dare you open my mail? You did despise Susan Reiner, didn't you? Oh, and yet she must have thought you adored her. How about Shelley? How about the others? How about me? Have you always despised all of us? I'm going out. I may not be back tonight. Yes, you may not. Away. Can you do that? It's an emergency. I want the door lock changed. One night when he was in the shower, I got his keys and went to the filing cabinet. I saw stacks of money in there, new bills, and I saw a will. Susan Reinert's will? Yes. I didn't have much time, but I saw his name and I saw her name. He had told me about her obsession with him and how she had talked about putting his name in her will. But he never told you he had the will in his possession. No. In fact, he told me he never even saw it. But he had it, at least temporarily, right here in this apartment. Do you think that Chris Pappas will talk to us? If he finds out that I have, I think he will. 
tell me something, Sue. Why did you stay with him all that time? You obviously knew a lot about the other women. Why? He told me the others didn't mean anything to him. That I was the one that was important to him. See, I'd never had any sexual involvement whatsoever before I met him. Um, I'd never loved anyone else. That was 16 years. I wanted marriage. I wanted children very much. Uh, and he said, be patient. So I was patient. I was very patient. Uh, well, that's about all I can remember at the moment, but if uh, more comes to me, I'll call you. What's in that envelope, Chris? Oh, that one. Bill told me to keep that one, too. Um, it's apparently a letter from Jay Smith to Bill. Dr. Smith seems to be instructing Bill on how to testify for him at his trial in the store robbery. Jay Smith signed the letter? Oh, no, it's typed, it's unsigned, but in context, it seems to be from Dr. Smith. It also uh, outlines the elaborate telephone system that they had together. Hmm. We sure like to be able to connect Smith and Bradfield in some way. Well, one of the reasons I'm telling you all this is to help you get the right man for the murder. You still don't think Bill Bradfield was involved? Okay, I'm ready to admit that he might have cheated her out of 25000 but as for the rest... Chris, did it ever occur to you when Bill sold you the bill of goods about wiping your fingerprints off the money that... Uh... You were wiping off someone else's prints? Susan Reinert's, for instance? No, no, it didn't. Well, if you're now ready to buy him as a thief, why not as a murderer? Because I believe he could never do such a thing. He says if he inherits her money, he's going to set up a trust fund for the children if they're ever found. I believe Jay Smith is responsible for the murder of Susan Reinert. Bill did try to protect her. Did it ever occur to you in recent months that he had you make that silencer not to use on Jay Smith, but on the children? We've been fooling around on this investigation for two years. We're going to make things happen. We're going to file charges against Bradfield and Shelley for theft by deception of Susan Reinert's money. You can't arrest that young girl. Watch me. It's malicious, Joe. She hid the money for him. She's been lying for him to this day. She's a conspirator in my book. You're only charging her because she refuses to cooperate. The U.S. attorney will say you're violating her civil rights. I ain't no FBI agent. I don't need no U.S. attorney telling me when I can wipe my nose. This is a state law, not a federal law. We're going to file charges, and if the FBI don't like it, the FBI don't have to be there when we arrest her. You're making a big mistake. I'm making something happen. <laughs> Bradfield theft trial. We're gonna convict Bill and Shelley today. Showtime. Wake up. Yeah, yeah, I guess I did fall asleep for a second. Joe! A happy DA. What's this all about? You are absolutely right. Shelley wants to make a deal. She'll testify to the true facts. We drop the charges against her. Why, sure. I never wanted to send Shelly to jail. Shelly and me are gonna get along fine from now on. Why, I feel like she's a daughter to me already. When did you first see Mrs. Reinert's will? Uh, it was when Bill was in the shower. Um, I first became suspicious of his locking the drawer of our uh, filing cabinet. Where did Mr. Bradfield say he got that large amount of money in the trunk of his car? Uh, he said he saved it. He didn't want Sue Myers to know about it. 
And just so the jury isn't confused, would you explain one more time why the two of you were wiping the fingerprints off that money? I know it sounds dumb, but at the time it seemed logical. What did you do with the money after you took it from the bank at Mr. Bradfield's instructions? I hid it in my closet and later returned it to him. I didn't tell the truth at first because... I guess I believed in him. What did your sister Susan Reinert say when she telephoned you? My sister said that she was making an investment with her friend, Bill. After investigating the investment certificate found in the papers of Mrs. Reinert, what did you determine? That the certificate was a fake. The company appearing on the document had no employees with the name shown on the certificate and had no record of a transaction with Mrs. Reiner. Did you see the jurors' faces when Chris Pappas was explaining how they sat there and wet fingerprints off all that money? The thing that scared me about this case is how Bradfield had so many schemes inside his schemes that it might get too complicated for the jury. I mean, I hope they understood how he trusted nobody. For instance, for instance, like how he has Chris put the money in the safety deposit box, yet he has Shelly take it out in case Chris ever turns on it. There's actually a nutty kind of logic to everything he does. Well, I've been reading about them. Them? Sociopaths. People without conscience. The more risk they take, the more thrill they get out of it. The more people they can manipulate, the sweeter it is. Yeah, well, if having no conscience is what a sociopath is, then both Bradfield and Smith are world class. Sociopaths would rather manipulate than go to heaven. Actually, manipulation is heaven. If you ever get them in the electric chair, they'll try for the last laugh. They'll swear they're innocent, hoping somebody will believe them so that they can manipulate to the end. Then I hope I can help them both to die happy. Well, with the way things are these days, if you convict him of theft, it's only gonna get a couple of months in prison. Does that bring you any closer to a murder indictment? Sometimes I feel this case is never going to end. Your Honor, we, the jury, find the defendant guilty of... All right, let's have none of that. Your Honor, we find the defendant guilty of theft by deception. Mr. Reiner, now that William Bradfield has been convicted of swindling her ex-wife out of $25,000, do you believe the police have done all they could do? Of course not. The governor is committed to keeping the state police on this case full time uh, until... Do you believe this investigation is at a standstill? No, by no means. I appeal to anyone out there who has any information about my children to please contact the state police. Mr. Reinhardt, are you optimistic that your children are still alive? Of course I'm optimistic. Look, I know there are people out there who murder children, but uh, I can't believe that anyone would kill these children. Not these children. After two and a half years, I guess we can't blame our bosses for the cutback. But to leave only three of us and two feds? Well, uh, I guess we wouldn't be here either if the governor wasn't so committed to this case. Jason asked me if I thought we'd solve this case before he graduated. From high school or college? Now, this has got to end soon. Doesn't it? If you want out, just say so. I'll never quit. You know I'm in as long as you are. It's just hard to explain to a kid how a case can go on this long. Well, if you figure it out, explain it to me. OK, you guys, your lunch is ready. Come on. Ah, real food. You know I'd have to eat most of the time working for this guy. I know. You cops are crazy. Come on. I didn't 
qualify. The guy that dropped a 2,000-pound Cape Buffalo when it was charging? I couldn't hit the damn target. You're a little shaky, Joe. Sure, I'm mad. When's your next physical? I don't have time to take no damn physical. I'll take it when the case ends. Look, go back to the barracks and take your vitamins. I gotta shoot again. Like some damn rookie. Okay, well, I'll wait for you. No, 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 no. Go on. I'll catch you right, huh? Hey, Jack. Can I get you something? No, no, but I'm fine. I'm just fine. No tears, Jack. Can't have tears around here. No, know? no, I can't play the crybaby. Not in Joe Van Ort's house. Are you still gonna live in the cabin? If you are, and you need any help. Oh, I don't think I could ever live there again. I'm gonna give the cabin to Joe's nephews. On the provision that they don't sell it until I die. In case I ever want to see it again, you know. Yeah, well, if there's uh, anything... I guess I never wish for a child of my own more than I do now. You know, he always got a big kick out of what the older troopers said about you, Jack. What's that? Well, that you remind everybody of Joe when he was young. I guess all those years working together, you're a lot like him. <laughs> he got a big kick out of that, even if he never told you that. Yeah, well, I'll take my vitamins. Okay, Betty. Hey, Jack. 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 Um... Now that Joe's gone, the uh, FBI is probably going to want to take over leadership in the investigation. This is a state case, not a federal investigation. I'm in charge of the Reiner Task Force as of now. Task Force, Jack? You're alone and nearly forgotten. This case is going nowhere. As far as the murder prosecution of Bradfield and Smith is concerned, prognosis is doubtful. You know, of all the bizarre things in this case, the most bizarre to me is that even though Bradfield's story that Jay Smith was going to kill her was known by at least a dozen people, nobody ever warned her. Nobody. Well, I guess this is so long, Jack. There's just not enough work for us to do here. But rest assured, the case will stay open. And uh, if there's anything you need from us... Uh, 
I was just cleaning out Joe's desk. And I found a letter from two men that did some work at Three Mile Island the same weekend that Susan Reiner's body was left in Harrisburg. I just got off the phone with one of them. They spotted her car with the hatchback open at 7 o'clock on Sunday night. It takes exactly 90 minutes to drive from there to Jay Smith's house. Now I know why Jay Smith made those two toll calls from his house to his lawyer that night to establish his whereabouts far from Harrisburg as soon as possible. He must have just missed being seen by those two businessmen. Two and a half years. How could Joe have misplaced the letter for all that time? You never met the real Joe Van Or. Joe was sick. At one time, he was the best investigator I've ever seen. He taught me everything I know. Best of luck, guys. You never met the real Joe Van Ort! See you tomorrow, Jack. Joe would never quit. Never. Let me get this straight. You two have worked on nothing but the Reinert investigation for nearly three years. We make occasional reports to our commander, but we're left to our own devices. We're hoping for a break. What do you think? I think this case is a killer. Killed Joe Van Art. He smoked four packs a day. During trial, I smoked five. Okay, so we're down to a mini task force. You two and me. Now, it's going to take me at least a couple of months to read all these investigative reports. You know, the FBI writes long reports. is Jack Holtz. I'm with the Pennsylvania State Police, mm -hmm. and I'm working on the Reiner case. Gee, that was a long time ago. You're still looking for Karen and Michael? Yeah. Yeah, I sure am. I've been showing this to the neighbors, but I'm not having much luck. What is it? I don't know. It's something a kid might say, but I don't know what it means. You know what it looks like? It looks like that pin they used to give at the museum. What museum? the Philadelphia Museum of Art. You've never been there? No. Well, you know in the movie Rocky? Yeah. He's training. He runs up the stairs. That's the place. One month before the Reiner children disappeared, the sixth grade went on a field trip to the Philadelphia Museum. Those that went were given lapel tabs to prove they paid admission. I'll ask in today's assembly if any ninth graders remember the pin. Thank you. Okay. Saved it. I don't know why. Something just told me to save it. There were thousands of these handed out. But I found another neighborhood kid who said that Karen had a pin and that she wore it often. It's not enough to put somebody in the electric chair. Is it a link? Another circumstantial link? It could be a very strong link if you could find somebody who saw her wearing the pin on the day that she disappeared. Jack, I'm on your side. You know, I used to feel sort of inadequate because I never went to college. Do you think that if I had gone to law school, I'd be able to make some sense out of the rules you guys make us play by? We aren't even close to an indictment against Smith. And I'm afraid to try for one against Bradfield without more. Okay. Now, when Bradfield finally serves his 
four months for theft conviction. Now, I predict that mama's boy won't last two days without finding himself a protector. I am willing to bet you that it'll be some streetwise con from Philly, the kind of guy that Bradfield thinks he can control. Who are you? My name's Bradfield. I was wondering if you could teach me how to play chess. I'd really appreciate it. You couldn't be no worse than the rest of the guys around here. I could teach you some moves, but the rest is up to you. Depends on what you got up in here. Proctor, when you get out, I hope you'll return to Philadelphia. I'm going to buy an apartment house downtown and get a real good deal on land with all this urban renewal. I could use someone like you to manage it for me. You could do really well for yourself. Good salary, not too much work. Hey. Hey. Where the hell do you think you're going, man? This is my friend, man. He's going with me. That's where he's going. Cool, man. Thanks, Proctor. Anyway, it wouldn't be too much work. Big building. You're Proctor Noel? That's right. I'm Jack Holtz. This is Lou DeSantis. Did you ever hear about the Susan Reiner murders four years ago? No. A school teacher got killed. Two kids disappeared. It's possible your friend Bill Bradfield did it, along with another school teacher, Jay Smith. You ever talk about it? No. But if he ever did say anything about Susan Reinert, would you call us? Man, I'm all in here for a little robbery. I don't know nothing about murders. But if you ever did find something out, would you call? This card has my number on it. At home and at work. Man, a guy can get killed around here for talking to cops. I don't want no trouble. I got to go back to my crib. I understand you got two kids of your own. You got any pictures of them? I got to go back to my crib. Jack, I've been thinking. Let's go after Bradfield. He'll be getting out of jail the day after tomorrow, and I, I just hate to see him happy. I'm going to the grand jury with what we've got. We're not going to get any more. I still got a feeling Proctor Knoll's going to come through. Yeah, you and your feelings. OK, well, if he does, it's one more pebble for the pile. All right. OK, I'll see you tomorrow. I want to make a person-to-person -person call to Harrisburg. Collect to Mr. Jack Holtz. OK, listen up. We've been told by a neighbor that he has an attack dog. He'll be ready. Now, if attacks, destroy it. And Chris Pappas says that Bradfield might have several hunting weapons in the house, so keep that in mind. All right, let's go.
moves shooting. Hey, he was talking about the dog. You can move. In fact, it's okay to breathe if you want to. This is Ken Reinert. Is Jack Holtz there, please? Yeah, well, I have to talk to him. Look, it says in the newspapers that you've arrested Bradfield. Yes, I'm happy that you've arrested him, but three counts of murder? You can't file three counts. How can you file three counts of murder? I see. Thank you. It means that uh, the children are officially dead. Decreed by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Now, Mr. Knoll, will you please tell the jury what sentence you are currently serving? 18 months to five years. Are you married? Yes. You have children? Two. Now, Mr. Knoll, did you at any time have occasion to speak with Mr. Bradfield in the cell block after he came back from a court proceeding? Yes. I was looking for him because I had some coffee for him. And I found him standing on the tier. I called him. I said, Bradfield, come here. What's wrong, man? How did he appear to you? Like the veins was up in his head, just popping up. And he said, they messing over me. They denied my bail reduction. And he said, if I wasn't in a financial bind, I wouldn't be here. And none of this would have had to have happened to Susan. Then what happened? I didn't really know what he was talking about. He said, I was there when they were killed, but I didn't kill any of them. And I said, damn, Bradfield, the children too? And he said, well, none of this was meant for the kids, only Susan. But there couldn't be a stone left unturned. You had to tie up all the loose ends. Why did you come forward with your story? Well, the police said they weren't going to pressure me, but to think about it. There was two innocent children involved. Now I went back, and I was laying there in my cell. And I finally got to thinking, like, damn, what would happen, you know, if uh, this was my kids? Would I want somebody to step up and do this for mine? And that's when I got up and went in my box, got the phone number, called. He said he was worn out. He said that the weekend of June 22nd would be the last chance Dr. Smith had to harm Susan Reinert. He said he needed his friends with him. We counted the money in the motel. He told me to hide it in my room at home. She told me she and Bill Bradfield were going to be married in Europe during the summer. But I shouldn't tell anybody because it was secret. And he wasn't a secret sharer. He wanted me to make a silencer so that if we had to shoot Dr. Smith in order to protect Susan Reinert, we could do so discreetly. I saw the will in the filing cabinet. I also saw a stack of money. Why didn't you question him about it? I was confused. Frightened. I didn't want to know anymore. I'd been in love with him for 16 years. There'd never been another man in my life. State your name, please. William S. Bradfield, Jr. How old are you? 50. Can you tell us about your educational background, please? 
I graduated from Haverford College in 1955. I have a master's in liberal education from St. John's. I've done other graduate work at various institutions. Would you describe the relationship you had with the woman you lived with, Sue Myers? Well, we had not been living together as a real romantic couple in nine or ten years. You've heard various Commonwealth witnesses describe the relationship Susan Reinert claimed you had with her. Did you ever spend the night at Susan Reinert's house? I think we'll need you on redirect. I have to ask you to stick around. Uh, why don't you go have lunch? Be back around two. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Jack. Matt. How are you? Fine. How are you? Good. 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 Listen, I've been meaning to tell you something. Joe Van Ort was right and I was wrong when he filed charges on Shelley. It made her talk. It turned the case around. Thanks, Matt. Joe would appreciate hearing that. Anytime. You take care. Go get him. Mr. Bradfield, did you kill Susan Reinert? No, I did not. Did you kill her children? No. Did you plan to do either of those two things? No, I did not. Cross-examine. Who did kill Susan Reinhardt, Mr. Bradfield? I don't know. Well, in 1979, you told a number of people that J.C. Smith was going to kill her. And you were so afraid, you went to the shore for an alibi. Don't you now think he killed her? He may have. He may have. Why would you now think he didn't do it? Because the paper said her body was found in Harrisburg. And that's where a friend that she mentioned came from. Alec, she called him. Because there was a sexual device found in the car, and nothing that Dr. Smith ever told me led me to believe that he would operate in that manner. Does it make more sense that an unknown person named Alex would come all the way from Harrisburg, somehow get Jay Smith's comb and plant it in her car? Well, perhaps Dr. Smith and Susan Reinhardt had been together in the car, and he had lost his comb. Lost it in the wheel well? I never knew exactly where the body and comb were found. But you told friends that Jay Smith showed you tape and chains when he described how he killed people. Did you hear the testimony that there was tape residue on her mouth and chain marks on her body? Yes. Yet you didn't believe he killed her? If you were so preoccupied with guarding Susan Reinert, why did you go to Florida during the Christmas holidays? I was desperately tired. I don't see how much more I could have done without ending up in the hospital. Well, how about calling the police? Well, looking back, I, I wish I'd done that. I think we all wish that. Well, why didn't you go to Susan Reinert and say, Jay Smith has chains, he, he has guns, he has silencers, and by the way, he's threatening to kill you. You better do something about it. Did you ever say that to her? No. I don't know that that would have worked. It could have. Also, I wasn't sure that there was a relationship between Mrs. Reinert and Dr. Smith. Well, wouldn't that be all the more reason to tell her? If the person you think she might be having an affair with is planning to kill her? Well, looking back, I, I think it was. But that didn't occur to you at the time? No. Didn't it occur to you to tell the police? Yes. But we decided against that. We. You keep saying we. Wasn't it you bringing all the information to Chris Pappas, Sue Myers, and Vince Valaitis? Yes. You were the one making the decisions. I sought their advice in everything I did. The group made their decisions on the basis of your facts. Isn't that right? Yes. You thought the police were corrupt and involved with Dr. Smith because he said so. Have you ever heard of the Pennsylvania State Police? Looking back, I wish we'd called them. You could have just picked up the phone and said, I don't trust the Upper Marion Township Police, and I'm going to tell you about some very strange goings on. You could have done that, is that right? Any one of us could. You could have, couldn't you? We all could have. But you could have. Yes. You didn't, did you? None of us did. Have you ever heard of the FBI? Yes. Did Jay Smith have contacts in the FBI? He never said anything to me to indicate that he did. Mr. Bradfield, you've heard testimony from neighbors of Susan Reinert. 
that your car was frequently seen parked in front of her house overnight. How do you explain that? My car was left there to deter Dr. Smith from threatening her. Very often, I just left the car out front. Well, that brings me to her neighbor, Mary Go, who said she saw your car at least three times a week at 5 a.m. when she got up, and at 7.30 when she'd go to work, your car would be gone. Was she mistaken? Well, very often, I stayed late. And very often, I came early in the morning. So I can see how Mrs. Gove could feel that that happened all at once. I was taking a course in Greek at Villanova at Saturday mornings at 8 o'clock. And I would try to come over before class and make breakfast for the children. You were that good a friend and advisor to her and her children. Well, then, can you explain your comment to Susan Reinert's friend when she phoned you in New Mexico to inform you that Susan was murdered and the children were missing? You said to her, Oh, yes. How old were the children? Well, I knew Karen and Michael were in grade school. I didn't know exactly how old they were. I didn't know them that well. Why'd you use the word were? Why did you refer to the children in the past tense on June 26, 1979? Uh, the assumption was that something awful had happened to the children. Ladies and gentlemen, as you deliberate your verdict, the most important tool at your disposal will be your common sense. That's what we looked for in selection. Common sense. Now, defense counsel has pointed out to you that no one had ever seen William Bradfield in any sort of romantic posture with Susan Reiner. He has said that there is only an illusion of wrongdoing. Defense counsel believes that the crime itself does not point to the defendant. Now, I'm going to show you that the circumstances point to no one else in the entire world. Now, you've all heard testimony about forensic evidence, about a hair found in the basement of Jay Smith's home, and about fibers identical to Jay Smith's upstairs carpet being found in Susan Reinert's hair. You've heard about chains in Smith's possession. And you've heard bizarre stories. William Bradfield was told, allegedly by Jay Smith, about taping the mouth of victims. And, of course, Susan Reiner did indeed have chain marks on her body and tape residue on her mouth. Now, you've heard a story from Chris Pappas about wiping fingerprints off money. And your common sense tells you that this can only be because Bradfield was worrying about Susan Reinert's fingerprints. Now, let's talk about the crime scene that points to only one person in the entire world. Now, Bradfield said that two people could have killed Susan Reiner. Jay Smith, because she had an affair with him, or a crazy man named Alex who happened to leave a sexual device under the seat of her car. Now, why is this so important? It wouldn't be important if Susan Reiner had been the only one killed. But it is important because her children were not in that car. Who benefits from this scenario? Why weren't the three of them in the car? Or in the alternative, if Jay Smith acted alone, why isn't Susan Reinert in the same place with her children who have never been found? Now, whoever helped in the commission of this crime made sure that the children's bodies would never be found to supply additional forensic evidence. But he took the awful chance of driving a dead body all the way to Harrisburg, parking it in a public parking lot, opening the hatch for all the world to see, and then just walked away. And do you know why? Because this body was worth to one person in the entire world $7,000 a pound. And it had to be found on the alibi weekend when he was in Cape May, New Jersey with witnesses. Nobody collects from the insurance unless death can be proved. Now, perhaps that's the final irony in this case. The real measure of irony and justice is that the children's lives were perhaps not sacrificed in vain because their absence from the scene speaks so loudly of the defendant's guilt that it is impossible to ignore.
Now, five years ago today, the mother of Susan Reinert died, leaving her an inheritance. And a plan to kill her began. Today, the conspiracy ends for this defendant. And I'm leaving it to you. Get the change. Here you go, Jack. Thanks. Yeah. You still up to five packs? You stop counting. Joe Van Orton never I know, that I know, I know. I didn't like the looks of juror number four. You think number four looked confused? I think I'm going to go home if you start this crazy. You might as well. Case this complex. I think they'll be out till tomorrow afternoon, maybe longer. Jack Holtz. Telephone. Yeah, hello. But they're camping. Look, they've only been out. Okay, we'll be right there. They got a verdict. 75 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, the court has been informed that the jury has reached a verdict. Will the foreman please hand the verdict slips to the clerk? You may read the verdict. Will the foreman please rise? In the case of the Commonwealth versus William S. Bradfield, Jr., the charge of murder of Susan Reinert, how do you find the defendant? Guilty. Murder in the first degree. In the case of the Commonwealth versus William S. Bradfield, Jr., the charge of the murder of Karen Reinert, how do you find the defendant? Guilty. Murder in the first degree. In the case of the Commonwealth versus William S. Bradfield, Jr., the charge of murder of Michael Reinert, how do you find the defendant? Guilty. Murder in the first degree. Bring the defendant to the bar. Mr. Bradfield, you have the right to address the court. Do you wish to say anything in your own behalf? Your Honor, I realize that you are constrained to act on the basis of the verdict of the jury. But I am compelled to utter some simple truths. I did not kill Susan Reinert. I did not kill her children. I did not conspire to kill Susan Reinert, and I did not conspire to kill her children. I was not an accomplice to the killing of Susan Reinert. I'm not an accomplice to the killing of her children. I cannot show remorse for something I have not done. And all the courtrooms and all the juries and all the judges in the world cannot alter this simple fact. I can only but pray that one day the children be found alive. That is all I have. I guess you are some kind of a, an anomaly to us. Many young witnesses have testified today that your interests were in things other than material. And yet it's been decided that you were willing to take three lives for $730,000 and not for any other reason. We find you a person of unusual quality, highly creative, intelligent, and with more than a modicum of charm. But I think it's safe to say that you're also extremely destructive. A word that hasn't been used but does apply here is diabolical. The implication is of a cold and calculating mind, totally bereft of any human sympathy or compassion. You're bent on achieving your ends at all costs. You're an extremely dangerous person, and for that reason, the sentence must afford the community maximum protection. I therefore impose the following sentence. On indictments number 908, 908A, and 908B, convictions of homicide in the first degree of Susan Reinert, Karen Reinert, and Michael Reinert, it is ordered that you pay the cost of prosecution and undergo imprisonment in the state correctional institution for three life terms, these terms to be served consecutively. I hope I'll be able to see the sky for my cell. 
I hear that Villanova has a correspondence course in astronomy. I've always been interested in the heavens. Greased for my poetry. Thank you.